Let's dive into using GitHub Coach Spaces along with all of the common features that make it so powerful. First up, I'm going to go into this organization. And I'm going to select repositories. And I'm going to create a new repo. When you first get into GitHub Coach Spaces and GitHub uh, configurations, the first thing to be aware of is a new repo. And you have a few options here that are important to consider. One is private public. Let's go ahead and say public. Also, do you want to start from a template? This can be a great way to save a ton of time. You could create templates for different languages, and then everything's already set up for you. So let's go ahead and say a uh, template here, and I see if we can find one for REST. If I go through here, we say a REST new project template. Great. If you wanted to create your own .files repo, uh, all you need to do is uh, let's go ahead and do that again. So we'll go back here. We'll go new. Uh, and this will just see, you know, these, these are the dot files. It should give me the ability to open this up in code spaces and code spaces are a cloud based environment. It allows me to edit things inside of here. We'll go ahead and do that. Make this a little bigger as well. So we'll say touch dot bash rc and then we'll make this bigger how about there perfect and now that i've got that bash rc in, inside of here all i need to do is just put something inside eb equals vim and we could say you know tilde dot bash rc right so basically edit the bash rc file and then we could do another one which is uh reload it and we can say rl equals and we could just say uh, source uh, the bash rc so this is just a nice little shortcut here that will allow me to you know basically uh, edit and reload a bash rc file so if i source this bash rc here you can see if i say eb this would edit up the the vim file and if i want to reload it i could just see this and reload it right so now i could just check this in just get add dot um, uh, bash RC. And we can go over to code spaces and under code spaces, look, automatically installed dot files. There we go. No gift dot file. So, so perfect. We've got this set up where we're all ready to go and that'll install it inside of any repo that I need to. The next step that we're going to do is, is actually, uh, launch this with a code space. So if you select code here, notice it says your workspace in the cloud, you can pick a default one or we can go here and say new with options and we can select um, different configurations so in this case this is using this configuration for rust which is uh, well take a look at in a second but we also can toggle the machine types in this case we can see there's two core four core eight core 16 core whatever kind of machine i need for my particular problem or even a gpu as well i'm not going to pick a big one 16 core great Let's go ahead and launch this. And initially, it'll take just a second to build the container uh, because I don't have code space pre build set up. Let's go ahead and do that next. Let's, so let's go here, go to settings. And if we go down to code spaces, you can use this option called pre build. And what pre build will do is it'll automatically install all the software that I've got configured and make this so that it runs automatically. Uh, when I'm building my um, my repo. So this means that the next time I launch it, it'll launch very, very quickly. All right, so we're inside of here. We've got it all set up. We've got this neat template. And then it's up to us at this point to decide what kind of um, user experience uh, we want for this particular repo. So what I'm going to do next here is I'm going to go in and change the background. So I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, go to uh, themes here. And we'll go to color theme, dark, color blind beta. There we go. Perfect. And I like this one because it has nice contrast and so nice dark screen here. And then if we want to do it, get pull, we can take a look at what we've got left to demo. All right. So what I've already done is I've shown that you can create a repo with a template. Now, let, let me do one thing, though, real quick, which is show you that if I wanted in the future to make this a template, I could go to settings and I would select this option like this. And what this would do would mean that other people 
in my organization or even if it's public, other people uh, on GitHub could use this template to build off of. And this is a really good idea for your own personal use is to leverage templates that you save a lot of time when you're creating new repos. So that's just something to be aware of. And if we go back here, we can take a look at the key files. There's a Docker file, and the Docker file is actually pretty straightforward in that we inherit from the dev containers uh, Docker file. And this Docker file here is using Rust. So Rust is already set up for us from Microsoft. There's not much we need to do. We can put a little bit more if we want to inside uh, the command and we can say, let's say update it, um, go ahead and install, maybe Clang, LLD, whatever else I need to do. And I can do that every time the machine launches. Again, because we're using uh, code space, uh, the pre-builds, it can actually do this automatically. The only other thing to configure would be if I wanted to go inside of here and tweak things a little bit. And I can really do things like install certain extensions, et cetera, et cetera, and put these in. Now, one thing I will change here that will, will get us to the next uh, lesson is I'm going to uh, get rid of this because I need to actually tweak things a little bit. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And in order to uh, persist extensions here, you could just save them inside of here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to extensions here. I'm going to find that um, GitHub Copilot chat is something that I actually want to install. So let's go ahead and select that. Now that we've switched gears here, what we can do is start to play around with something called uh, GitHub Copilot Chat or, or Copilot X. And it's a very powerful feature because it allows us to act like we have a pair programming friend here. So here we go. Welcome, Noah Gift. I'm your copilot. I'm here to help you get things done, generate unit tests, explain the code, propose uh, fixes. Well, say, uh, I want to create a new Rust uh, project. All right, let's see what it says. Thinking. Okay, all we have to do is say cargo new new project. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's just say cargo new, and we'll say uh, in, instead of my project, we'll just call this hello world. You're great. Uh, and then it says, how do I run my project? Oh, do you just say cargo run? So let's go ahead and take a look at the code here, and we see that inside of hello world, we have the main, and we we see that that's the actual code. Again, if I toggle back here. It's going to tell me that I would need to CD into Hello World and there's type in cargo run and we've got this cooking. Now, let's ask it to uh, change things a little bit. Now, notice that it says here that it will compile when the project, if your project has a main, it will be compiled as binary and run. If your project has a lib.rs, it'll be compiled as a library and not run. So let's do that, right? So let's go ahead and create, if we type in tree here, we see that in fact, there is only the um, the main inside of this uh, location. What we can do is we can just say, you know, create an add function. And guess what? It goes through and it creates it. Notice how this says public, so it's going to be exposed publicly. Now, in order to use this, I would just go back here and we could just go ahead and say, um, you know, result equals hello world add. So it's going to use the cargo meme right here inside the package to actually use the library code. Let's go ahead and try this out. Let's see if it works. Let's go ahead and change it like that. And we can just say cargo run. And uh oh, we have a, a small error here. So this is one of the nice things about using a very powerful language like Rust is it tells you very verbosely what mistakes you made. In this case, that's all we got to do. We run it. Hello world, one, two, three. Perfect. All right, let's take a look here at this uh, GitHub Copilot CLI. This is one of the other features I wanted to show you that's really amazing. It's a technical preview. You can see that it's not perfect, but we can do some amazing things here by just typing in the Q question marks and asking it to actually help us out with command. So if I go over here and I go and I say, you know, show me uh, the directory structure. Let's go ahead and see what it tells us. Oh, you just run tree. Now, what I can do is I can revise it. I can cancel 
where I can run the command. Let's go ahead and run it. Perfect. Got now this is kind of annoying is that it has got all these artifact files that I don't really care about. So what if I wanted to actually uh, get rid of that? So I could say, uh, you know, run the tree command for a Rust project, but only show the source files and not the artifacts. Let's see if it knows how to figure this out. There we go. So we just say tree and it's going to ignore the target where the builds are actually run. So we can actually go through and run this command. Let's go and run it. Are you sure you want to execute it? There we go. Now, this is a lot better because this particular project, which is a little bit of a complex project, it is showing us that it's just the Rust code, just some C++ code uh, and some header files here that I've got set up. So it's a, a lot cleaner to actually take a look at. So this is yet another tool that's important to be aware of is this GitHub uh, Copilot CLI. Uh, and really we've been able to cover quite a bit of stuff inside of our demo here, everywhere from, you know, creating a repo, uh, enabling dot files, you know, installing uh, and configuring code spaces in dev container, configuring and running Copilot X, and also configuring and running a Copilot CLI.